Richard Schechner is um, editor of TDR uh, and professor emeritus at the Tisch School of the Arts in New York. Um, Richard, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I will hand over to you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this uh, panel is going to be dealing with uh, two uh, matters, one theoretical about theaters of cultivation and purgation, a theory of Sun Weizhou, William Sun, who is a uh, professor at the Shanghai Theater Academy and a, uh, a consortium editor of TDR. The TDR consortium consists of several uh, organizations who co-edit uh, issues uh, in a rotating way. The New York University, the home base, the Shanghai Theater Academy in Shanghai, China, uh, China Stanford University in Palo Alto, California, uh, Brown uh, University in uh, 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 Rhode Island, and Yale University in Connecticut. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, to today, uh, we have uh, uh, consortium editors, Sun Weizhou, William Sun from Shanghai, and he put together this uh, particular issue of, of TDR. So I'm going to turn it over to him so that he can introduce his issue and his colleagues who will be discussing uh, performance theory and the practice of drama etudes in Chinese schools. All of this is featured in the issue of TDR, which will be in print starting on June 1st in about a week. So the matters that are going to be discussed today, you can actually read the articles and, and find out a great deal more about these matters uh, starting w about one week from today when TDR will be available both online and in print. So Professor Sun, uh, or William Sun, I'm turning it over to you. Many thanks, Richard. <coughs> and hello, everyone. Um, William Sun, as Richard already told you, uh, I'll give a brief introduction to this issue, particularly my paper on the theme of this issue, theater of purgation of theater and theater of cultivation. Well, in this paper and in this issue, I have shared with my readers my deepening understanding of the Chinese theater and Western theater. Since I returned from the States to Shanghai, China 22 years ago, I have deepened my understandings of the Chinese theater and Western theater, especially in the past decade or so. Well, uh, by and large, theater discourse in China sound, sounds very westernized. The real theater in China and Western theater are very, very different. Uh, one thing you may not even believe, there's no mainstream theater in China. Most productions run only one or two shows at one venue or for the entire run. That is not mainstream theater. Why is that? In the past uh, decades or so, I have been asking myself and my colleagues in China and in the States, in the West, why is Chinese theater is so different from the American theater I was, was familiar with before I returned, then I see one big question. Uh, while we learn a great deal from Western theater, we have missed two important things. One is what we see most Chinese theater scholars and theater practitioners from drama schools, what we believe is the essence of Western theater is based on Greek tragedies, theater of purgation, catharsis, purgation uh, of things undesirable, showing undesirable things, bad deeds for the purpose of catharsis. That's what we believe is the essence of Western theater. In fact, this is largely incompatible with Chinese culture. 
This is one thing. The other thing is, as a matter of fact, there is a large portion of theater of cultivation, very much like Chinese theater, Chinese operas in the West as well. But we have overlooked that part. That's why all the Chinese scholars are writing about theater of purgation, as we learn from the West. Very few people pay attention to the mainstream theater in the West. Largely musicals, comedies, and plays of, uh, with uplifting scenes. Uh, of all these, Hamilton, the recent Hamilton, is probably the best example. So I believe that people like myself, ret returnees from the West, who have learned a great deal from Western theater, have often introduced Western theater to our Chinese colleagues uh, in a way that is not comprehensive, that is not impartial. We have focused too much, too much on the avant-garde, on the dark side of Western theater. And, and also, we believe the longer... Oh, it looks like William might have um, frozen very briefly there. Um, we'll wait to see if he rejoins us. But is there anything that anybody wanted to say to continue on what William was talking about? Anything that anyone wants to ask? Well, I know his essay his as well, and I would like to engage him uh, in a dialogue about it. But if he's frozen, it's not really fair. But his uh, basic theme, I mean, hopefully he will get unfrozen very shortly. Uh, will you let me know uh, uh, when that happens? So, yeah, he should He should just uh, log back in, I think. So he'll just reappear. So go. He's there now. Uh, not yet, no. Not yet. So that this uh, uh, comparison is, uh, I, I think it's a, a very powerful comparison. I don't think it's the uh, whole story, of course. Uh, in other words, there's uh, uh, a lot of uh, experimental or avant-garde theater that is not about purgation. There's uh, uh, tons of uh, stand-up comedy and uh, uh, other forms of uh, non-mainstream uh, Western theater that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't know if it's uplifting, but it's certainly not in the mode of Greek uh, tragedy, Western theater has one origin in Greek tragedy, actually then to the Roman tragedies in the Renaissance, but it has other origins in medieval church and procession theater celebrations and so on and so forth. So it's very complicated, but I think uh, uh, Professor Sun Williams' uh, basic thesis is extremely interesting, especially uh, concerning the reception of uh, Western theater by Chinese scholars and his uh, analysis of the Chinese popular theater. Uh, I really don't want to speak for him. I feel a little awkward. And I think perhaps we should move while waiting for him. If he's not back, we should move to Professor uh, Shun and we can start to talk about etudes. This uh, webinar should not be about me summarizing somebody else's ideas. Uh, so I would like to, uh, and then uh, Bell, uh, and then we can talk about what the etudes are. So while we're waiting for Professor Sun, let me ask Shun Liang uh, to outline the uh, practice of drama etudes. What are drama etudes and how were they developed and how are they practiced in Chinese uh, primary and secondary schools? So I'm gonna turn it over to Professor Shun Liang who worked very closely with uh, or William Sun. Now, I think William is back now, correct? So, uh, uh, let's move on to Shen Liang's topic. Well, no, no, I, I, we it interrupted yours. I think you should finish summarizing and then move on. I, I tried to summarize a little bit because you were frozen, but I think you should summarize. Then we'll move on to uh, Shen Liang, okay? Just uh, summarize what you were saying. We lost you. Uh, I thought I almost ended my talk and then your summarization was perfect. So I think I'm done with my topic. Okay, let's move on then to Professor yeah. Shun Leung. Right. Okay, 
thank you. And uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, I will talk about the drama etudes. It's a very unique experiment in our pedagogical uh, experiment that uh, try to bring the theater education to the elementary schools and the secondary schools uh, into the compulsory courses. Uh, let me introduce one story first. Uh, in June of the 2017, 28 performances of same short play, which was adaption uh, the adaption of Victor Hugo's Le Miserable was staged by students of, uh, in elementary school, which is not in a big city in, uh, in China. It is in a, a quite a small city in China, uh, in Shandong province. Uh, these performances were their final exam of required drama course. The course was taught in seven uh, fifth and sixth grade classes. These 32 students in each class were divided into four groups. Each group uh, produced a play. Thus, there were 28 final exam plays. These plays are 25 minutes long adaption of the, this French novel features Jean Varan stealing Bishop Mirror's silverware only to run into two policemen right away. But it's noteworthy that these 28 limitable plays performance were almost exactly the same, copied from professional actors of the Shanghai Theater Academy. The students watched on the video of these, this performance first, then they perform, their performance was similar to the final exam of a singing class, where all the students sing the same song. So all the students perform the same perf play. In the drama class, not only was the script the same in the, this play, not only the script, but also the mise-en-scene acting style, stage design, costume, and a sound. The presentation differed from each other only with regard to the students' individual personalities and the performing skills, which were highlighted precisely because each student group portrayed the same roles. So these, this method of teaching drama called drama etudes. So it's a it's quite a unique in China. So, so why we try to do this? Because in China, we are, uh, there are the huge populations, but theater is not very popular, especially the drama, the Western style drama. It's not very popular in China. So there we, we, we bring the theater, if we want to bring the theater to, the, uh, to the, these students, uh, we have to face a challenge that we don't have enough teachers to teach. So we try to find a way that uh, the teachers who are not professional theater artists, that if they are interested in and have the enthusiasm to teach drama, they can find a way to teach. So this, this is a basic background of the why we want to do the drama etudes. So can drama be a requirement in schools as music has been for decades in China? Also, I, th I think it's also, uh, it's a challenge to the, uh, to the uh, whole world because we want to do this in, a, in the very limited uh, time, classroom time only, 16 periods each semester, 40 minutes each period. So this is a, this is a question we want to uh, solve. So the idea of uh, drama etudes has been developed uh, since 2009. 
So STA has been searching for ways to make theater in the indispensable part of a primary and a secondary education for a long time. So to do see this first uh, by making theater a requirement courses, every student has time to practice in class and play the substantial role, but how can teach with no theater training gain the knowledge, the confidence to teach what they don't know, especially given the, that there is little chance for teachers in places other than Beijing and Shanghai to see live modern drama productions. So still some teachers are interested in the theater. We were challenged to invent something that could be taught after a short period of training we call so the pedagogy drama etudes. Drama etudes was devised by Sun Hui in 2009. The etudes entice all students to act in short plays stage in the classroom. Uh, at first, Sun, his colleagues and their students worked on short verse plays in Beijing opera style. It, it was called Confucius Disciples. Uh, these short comedies show people and the situation Confucius and his three fictional disciples encounter on their way to different kingdoms where they will promote Confucian philosophy. And uh, after this, in 2014, we start the first project especially uh, spe designed for the teaching the students in Chinese classes. The first project was five short plays in rhyme based on uh, Victor Hugo's novel we uh, have just mentioned. So scenery and lighting were minimal, making each etude relatively easy to produce. Other rhyming plays were based on uh, another famous uh, novelist, uh, uh, Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea. And we also adapt uh, Lu Xun's uh, Chinese uh, literature, his story uh, into the drama etudes. So these plays, the drama etudes, the, these plays themes and values are uplifting, not too complex or, or deep, definitely not obscure. This is why these etudes were widely accepted by teachers, parents, and principals, as well as by students. They were designed to appear to the largest possible number of stu schools and students nationwide. Because full-length classical plays, both Chinese and foreign, are too long for students to perform in classrooms. So we have to write new plays. And uh, finally, I will introduce the style of this drama etudes. The so drama etudes is kind of a, uh, some, the style is between Chinese opera and Western uh, drama. The, the unique uh, aspect is this, it's a, we call it a rhyme drama. The etudes are more rhythmic and poetic than spoken drama, uh, not, only are the rhyming verses vivid and fun for students, but they are also much easier to memorize, they speak loudly. So Williamson has said that one of the mission of Etudes Drama Projects of Le Mis is to introduce to school children in undoubtedly by prosaic literature in their daily life, some life rhyming languages through watching and acting in this new genre of rhyming drama. So the acting style is deeply influenced by the rhyming. Rhyming lines, the acting and the staging is not psychological realism as in modern Western drama or Chinese swaji. So it should entail a more physical staging than Western style realism. The physical movement is influenced by Chinese opera and martial arts. So I think it's, uh, I will leave to uh, William, maybe I leave to uh, Bing Yu to say about something about the training. Okay, thank you, Shen Liang. Uh, now let's move on to Zhang Bing Yu, our colleague who specializes in teaching acting. 
uh, she was the teach was well, she has <laughs> okay i think so we, we i think a professor and if you could describe for us uh the uh, how yes. you teach it et cetera, et cetera. thank you okay so i work with uh teachers and students uh both uh with the drama issues and um First, I work with the teachers uh, because we want to twin, uh, just like uh, Professor Sen said, um, we have to twin those teachers who don't have theater experience to be a drama teachers who can teach in acting and uh, direct um, students uh, to uh, to direct students to uh, present the drama it is it's a big challenge um so at the first we face a big problem uh, as professor Chen said at uh, the time we have to fight with the time how can we uh train the teachers in few days to um, let them know how to acting and also let them know the the principles of teaching uh, acting and teaching drama in their class um so uh professor sun gave me a challenge to uh give me a challenge to say that you have to um you have to make exercise for the um classes for the training actually for the training um like uh, the exercise for the teachers to use in their uh class to use the in their class and also to use not only um like the 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 general um drama exercise to um like to um <laughs> to to teach the students to act in but also to make them uh, make the exercise to you can you can be used directly into the um drama issues so i find that we actually because we learned we take examples from chinese opera so we i find that we have certain patterns like certain codified patterns physical patterns uh in the in our productions in our uh drama issues productions um so I take examples from both general Western um, acting training, um, also in uh, also from the Chinese traditional theater training, actor trainings, um, in two in, uh, in two different parts or in two different aspects, um, voice and speech training and uh, physical training movements. So, for example we divided different ways of working on the stage like when, uh, how to teach the students different ways of working on the stage like if you are playing an uh, old man uh, on the stage how you walk if you are playing a girl um, a little girl how you walk on the stage uh, so we use the the Chinese traditional uh, Chinese traditional theater actor training. They have uh, the certain patterns we call tai bu, uh, which is which also calls circling. Like uh, when you're on the stage, you move around, you're walking, and it means that you are moving to different spaces. So I was dividing the walking in different types, and then. Uh, I teach the teachers and the students how to um, how to walk in different characters. Uh, ex external, so I I use it into different like uh, fighting, kicking, looking, smile, and hair touch. A lot of like different ways of movements and uh, to how to use them into different characters. <laughs> I think I, I don't know if I'm making myself clear, but um, 
simply is that we use codified um, patterns, physical patterns in the exercises to make teachers and students to grasp the essence of the form of um, drama etudes. Yeah, etudes. I have a question That's for it. all three of you. Uh, that was very, very uh, interesting, Val. Thank you so much. So two, two questions. One is uh, specifically for William. Why choose a Western uh, drama? You know, why choose uh, Les Miserables hey, or uh, mm -hmm. Old Man in the Sea? And the second mm -hmm. question is a more general question for everyone. Do the students find the etudes to be fun? In other words, we know that there isn't, as you said, there isn't a great deal of uh, 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 spoken drama in the Western sense throughout all of China, but there's a vast amount of television, film, the internet, so that these students are uh, occupied, I'm sure, on their cell phones, uh, just like uh, young people everywhere. So how did they take to etudes? Did they find it interesting? Did they find it fun? Was it in any sense, uh, if not a, a rival to uh, a t television, film, and the cell phone, uh, was it acceptable to them? So there are two questions. Why use the Western authors and how did the students receive uh, this, uh, uh, the etudes? Okay, good question. Uh, in fact, before we decided to work on uh, the Les Mis series, I checked with many students, different groups. Uh, we learned that Les Mis the novel, some film versions are very, very popular in China. It, can, it could appeal to different, to three generations, grandparents' generation, parents' generation, and uh, children. Because uh, if, if you remember the, the poster of the Broadway version musical is a little girl, a cassette. So it can really appeal to many different uh, people from different walks of life. And we wanted to find something that appealed to different people, that appealed to teachers, parents, and children as well. So uh, and I'm glad that when we tried this, when we took them to schools, uh, it proved uh, it's a correct choice. Children did like it. And what's fun <coughs> what's funny is, I asked them which characters they would like to play most. Usually it's not Jean Valjean, nor the bishop. They wanted to play two added characters, the a young cop and the old cop, they, because they engage in the fight, fighting in the dark, which we learn from the Chinese opera uh, uh, with Jean Valjean, because they like, and the third choice, the third most popular choice was a maid who did not have a name because all these are, all these three are comic characters. So that answers your question: Why the choice of um, Lei Mei? And I should add, maybe Shen Liang could or Shen Liang led his team of students to work work on the old man and the sea. Shen Liang, you should tell Richard why you chose that novel. Novella, that's a short no novel. Uh, I think it's a kind of a, uh, some mix. So first, uh, we want to introduce uh, uh, the, the famous novels, or famous stories to the, uh, through the elementary and the secondary school students. We, we, we believe that uh, the, the classical uh, novels will be very good for them. So uh, this is uh, basic, I think, we, we, why we choose classical novels. Then it's happened that uh, we want to start the Western classical novels, because I think uh, uh, William have explained that the Le Mis is, uh, is coming to his mind that uh, because of the musicals and the stories and uh, the movies are quite uh, famous and also, uh, I should mention that it appears already in one textbook in Shanghai. 
so so that we believe that it will be also accepted uh, by the all the, uh, the the principals as teachers in Shanghai, uh, the schools. The old man sea is quite because uh, uh, I like the old man sea very much. Since the first, uh, so first is uh, the miss. I suggest uh, uh, maybe uh, we we can try the old man sea. It's also the challenge to to us to turn all the old man sea in, uh, into the into the play, and uh, it, it seems uh, quite successful in the first scene that uh, the, the the kids are liked very much. So maybe I can uh, ask the uh, the second question: whether students liked the these uh, uh, the drama I choose or not. I think the first I have to mention, and the most of the Chinese students that have never seen a live performance ever, so they they, they haven't a chance to go to the theater. So the the drama etudes, uh, the first step the drama etudes is we tour to the schools, to these students, the, the, let them see, the, watch the play, maybe in the first time in their life. So this, uh, this is, it's very interesting that all the students, uh, when, we, when we show the Lemis into the, uh, in, uh, in front of the, uh, students in in one uh, secondary schools, uh, they they were very happy to see a live performance first. And then, of course, they like the drama issues because it's quite simple uh, to understand and for even uh, all kinds of acting diaries, not uh, like the the the. the 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 small piece of the comedy drama in the TV. It's a, uh, I have to go, it's a really, it's a, it's a drama. So, and also it has a Chinese elements. So it's quite, uh, you know, it's familiar with them. So they, they like them very much. And uh, uh, that's, uh, is that, yeah, yeah, this is the answer. Thank you, thank you so much. I, I haven't been keeping track of time, Christian. Are we ready for the spectators, the people who, participated listening to the YouTube to ask some questions or where are we in time? Hey, hi, Rich, and then you still have time. Please carry on talking if there are some questions still to ask to the panel. I, I didn't hear you, Christian. Uh, you still have some time to talk amongst yourself. That's absolutely oh, fine, so oh, please, conti please oh, continue. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm wondering from uh, the three uh, participants also, uh, whether you feel the, the relationship between William's essay on theater of cultivation and purgation and the etudes. So uh, do the etudes in a certain sense embody and enact your theory, William? Yes. <coughs> I mean, I should add yes. to that, that you were the one who adapted Les Mis. I don't know who right. adapted Old Man in the Sea. So you're involved in the etudes as well. As a as a playwright, if not the teacher. Uh, are you uh, asking me, Richard? Yes, I'm asking you the relationship between okay. the foods and your yeah. basic theory of cultivation and purgation. Well, uh, I think uh, deep down there was a uh, connection because I began uh, the. The drama etude series in about six years ago, and Shen Liang mentioned an even earlier project that was Confucius Disciples. That was started in 2009. At that time, we did not have this term drama etude, but uh, the format was similar because it's also a series of short plays, each running for about 20 to 25 minutes. It's like a sitcom on stage, sitcom on stage, uh, because they were designed and created for school children to practice, to play in. So naturally, it would not be, it mustn't be too dark. Uh, that's the natural choice because 
the censorship of principles and edu educational bureau heads were uh, much harsher than normal censors. We realized that even parents would also become censors. Then after more, about a dozen years of practice of doing those uh, shorter plays, little plays for school children, probably I became more and more aware of the topic, the subject of theater in order to appeal to broader audience base. The other reason was since I retired from my administrative positions, I had more time to do my own plays, longer plays, like a professionally uh, run plays, and you have to sell tickets. So you need to appeal to, to common theater goers, even though they are mostly college educated people. So I noticed, I paid more attention to what kinds of theater uh, people like. Then I realized actually uh, in China, what we need most, but we are short of is popular theater. So you can see two types of theater on two extremes. One is uh, propaganda pieces. The other is dark pieces in, imported from the West. Ne that's why both these types follow the same production pattern. One show at one theater, or at most two, because most common people will not buy tickets to see them. Uh, there are no popular theater who can run longer than like two weeks, uh, almost none. That's why I forced myself to think, why is this the case? In New York, you see a variety of theater. In London, you see a variety of theater, all kinds of. Why? We only have very small number of types. That's why I realized theater of purgation and theater of cultivation, even though these two terms were not uh, conceived until about four years ago. That was after I started my etude practice. I think they are really related, I believe, because in, these, in the past 10 years or so, I checked with common theater goers and a uh, majority of theater people to, to uh, trying to find out why uh, there's no mainstream theater. Uh, Chinese theater is so different from uh, what I used to be familiar with in, in the States. Well, not only in New York, in small college towns, you have lots of uh, college productions, uh, road shows and community theater, all kinds of theaters. But here, very different. That's that's why I believe theory, the theater discourse, is too uh, dominated, too dominated by Western uh, avant-garde theories. Uh, we should pay more attention to common the stage crafts or dramaturgic crafts of popular theater. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, one, uh, another question, and that is, in terms of the A2s, is it something that's growing and developing? Are there more? Are people taking it up? Is it, uh, how many schools uh, is it in? Is it beyond being a, a pilot program? And it's now something that the STA, the Shanghai Theater Academy, and uh, Professor Zhang and uh, Shen, uh, Professor Shun can teach other people to do. So it's growing, or is it, what's what's its current status? What's its future outlook? Uh, yes, uh, we are actually uh, creating even shorter plays because those ATs are about twenty minutes long. It's still too hard for most schools because we don't have. Uh, teach theater teachers in any elementary school or 
uh, middle school. Uh, for those like uh, Chinese literature teachers or music teachers, uh, it's really hard for them to learn uh, in a short time to become a drama teacher. So we, uh, I I'm going to publish uh, a textbook for theater education major at college level. We are going to turn out more college educated uh, secondary school teachers in which we include shorter plays as short as like three minutes. Three minutes, it's like uh, children's songs, a few children's songs put together uh, to become a play. So we have shortest plays of three minutes and like 10 minute plays uh, created for kindergarten children, elementary school students, middle school students, and high school students. Uh, and more and more people are joining us in this project. Uh, Shen Liang and I have uh, edited uh, nine plays for high, for high school. Uh, in general, it's called arts. Those nine uh, textbooks include five, five uh, art genres, aside from the traditional music and uh, visual arts. Uh, we have added theater, dance, and film and television. And all these textbooks will be in use this coming fall. In, in how many schools about? Well, in all Shanghai schools, but these five genres are to be electives. The principals will pick two genres out of five. So theater and dance, and film and television will be in the uh, curriculum for the first time in the oh, public schools. Thank mm -hmm. you. Very good. Christian, are we ready for some uh, uh, questions from our uh, webinar oh, listeners? There are questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some questions in. So um, Carol is asking um, the following. She says, theater is often understood as being deeply entwined with social and political realities beyond the stage. What is the relationship between William's idea of a theatre of cultivation and China now? Well, uh, because now we are, first of all, using drama to train students in two directions. One is more uh, communication skills, because that's a unique problem for for Chinese school children. And uh, that's there's a big difference between Chinese school children and uh, many American school children, because the criteria for a good child in Chinese is you are a good listener. You always listen to elderly. You always listen to your teacher. You always listen to your parents. People never say, oh, you are a good speaker. Uh, now, that's the problem of traditional Chinese education for hundreds of years. Even in modern time, it's still like that. And uh, we don't have speech class. We don't have drama class. So that's why we believe drama class, no matter how simple it is, how short, uh, those drama etudes are, will even force, we can say force everybody to learn to speak in public. So that's communication skills. On the other hand, in terms of content, we will, we will pick good stories to cultivate children's good moral standards, like Jean Valjean, right? The Bishop, uh, Cosette. So we pick uplifting stories. Uh, we hope in the future, when we, when we move up to high school and to college level, and their plays can deal with more com complicated social problems. That's probably in the future, not at the beginning. Okay, great. Um, I'll ask another question, I think. Um, this one um, 
might be for Shun Liang. Um, Corbina asks, um, or, or rather says, the parallels between the word uh, etude in French and the German word Lehrstücke, to use to be which is used for learning plays um, uh, in Germany in schools is the comparison is really striking. Um, she asks, how much were you influenced by Brecht's Lehrstücke and your school theatre etude, given that Brecht um, is known in China and was inspired by Chinese theatre? Um, how is education distinguished from propaganda? Is there anything that you'd like to, to answer? Yeah. There we go. It's a very good question. And I, uh, it's, of course, it's not easy to answer. Because uh, the Brexit is, uh, he's, uh, in China, we all know that uh, Brexit is quite, uh, uh, he, he has to say something about the Chinese operas, that uh, he got some ideas of uh, Chinese operas. And, but uh, actually, uh, it's quite different. Uh, his method, he, his uh, Brexit theater is quite different from uh, Chinese opera. And, uh, we know the pressure to practice the theater uh, <coughs> in in uh, professional arts, so called, I think. But uh, when we teach drama in the elementary and secondary schools, uh, we it's hard to explain to the teachers practice. So, so I I don't think the drama attitudes has. Uh, kind of a relationship with Brecht's idea. And this is a this is the first uh, I, I think I should uh, to say. Then the second that the Brecht, there are some teachers uh, introduce some uh, uh, teaching method like the drama education and uh, uh, creative crea creative drama. This uh, which is uh, has been used uh, is in in UK and USA. Their method uh, they have come in relationship to brushing. But uh, when when some the teachers who have this, you know, try to use the drama in education and uh, uh, theater education, creative drama, this method in the school, uh, I. I could not say they really have the you know idea of the Brecht theater. Get the concept, concept, concept of Brecht theater. Uh, it's kind of a uh, like theater games, just like said theater games. It's very very hard to uh, uh, in Chinese circumstances and the situation. It's quite difficult to. Let the people know the, the get the idea of the Brecht theater. So it's not it, it, if it, it's kind of an obstacle, even the obstacle to the to 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 prevail the theater to let the students know taste the, the theater and drama. If we use the Brecht uh, way, the theater's way. So that's I think it's exactly Williams want to what want to say about the theater of the purgation, the set of cultivation that uh, it's the situation in China is I think uh, we should uh, uh, first let the people who have have haven't tasted drama taste the good drama first. Uh, and so we choose the uh, drama etudes, uh, the plays which is classical novel, and uh, use uh, something between some some the styles between the Chinese opera and the uh, Western spoken drama, which is this which we this, this Western spoken drama is kind of a real, not a brushed way; it's uh, Stanislav's the way I think. If, if I, I, I agree. Uh, let me add one thing. I agree, uh, but I would add the Brechtian dialectic approach to theater uh, ideally would be our next step. But first of all, we have to make every school child uh, be able to have time 
to have a teacher to teach them to play in a good play. Then the next time they can be, they can be played in in more complex, more sophisticated uh, dialectic plays. Not the first step. It will be the second step. I could just jump in just a slight little thing. So I remember on my uh, first trip, uh, or maybe my second, to the Shanghai Theater Academy, I met and saw Wang Zhaoling, who was mm -hmm. a great teacher and a great advocate of Brecht in, uh, in the Shanghai Theater Academy. So I'm just thinking that even though the Brechtian influence via Huang is not on the surface, it permeates some of the things uh, because not so much uh, the Lehrstücke, but the idea that theater does something rather than simply, uh, you know, uh, makes you feel good, but actually accomplishes some kind of social purpose. So that's, that's where I think the connection is that these etudes are uh, fun at one level, but they, uh, as we're hearing, they accomplish a purpose of pedagogy. They accomplish a purpose of familiarizing students with what theater is. And I, I, I would trace that back to a kind of culture in the Shanghai Theater Academy from way, way back. Do you have anything to say about that, uh, William? And then I, I do see that there's another question being asked by one yeah, of you. Uh, uh, we see a way of combining Brechtian approach to a more basic theater training. Uh, we can raise questions. We encourage teachers to raise questions uh, about the theater. For example, the bishop actually lies to save Jean Valjean. Should he lie? Should he not? Is he making a mistake? If there is time, the teacher can dis <clears throat> raise that question to discuss with the students. Now, our problem is for 40 minutes, you have 40 students in the classroom. So it's very hard to deal with all those issues. That's why we believe, let them play, everybody play first. That if you have time, you can discuss those issues in your Chinese class or in your uh, social uh, issue classes. That's also a way of combining Brechtian uh, approach with the more basic uh, drama training. Thank you very much, William. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to um, cut us slightly short there, I'm afraid. Thank you again, everybody, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, and thank you very much, all you participants from China. I really deeply appreciate it. Thank you.